Welcome to the Extreme Broadband Engineering product installation training. In this session, we'll explain how to install the 4 and 8 port Data Plus amplifiers. The learning objectives for this session are identify what's included in the Data Plus amplifier package, show how to configure the RF connections, show how to configure the DC power options, and explain the importance of using the power inserter. Let's get started. Let's look at what's included with the Data Plus amplifier package. The AC to 15 volt DC power pack, two service loss tags, the Data Plus amplifier, a power inserter module. This should be used when powering the amplifier. We'll explain why later. Optional mounting screws if not using quick mounting. And the installation instructions for quick reference during installation. Let's take a look at the port layout of the IPA1008D-RSVF Data Plus amplifier. As with all of our Data Plus splitters and amplifiers, the input port is located in the top left, and the passive VOIP modem port is located in the lower left. The passive ports identify with the blue port color, and a blue label make an installation easy and standardized. EMTAs and modems would be connected to this port. Since it is a passive port, it would not lose service if the power was interrupted to the amplifier. There are eight amplified forward and return unit gain ports. The IPA1008D-VF has eight passive return ports. Each amplifier has a unique bonding block system and two quick mount tabs for quick mounting and servicing. The IPA1004D-RSVF has the identical layout as the eight port amplifier. The only difference is that it has four forward and return gain ports. The IPA1004D-VF has pass for return. The layout of the RF ports of the Data Plus amplifiers is very user friendly and cable installation is easy. The input cable is always connected to the upper left port. The VOIP modem cable is always connected to the lower left port, which again is identified with the blue port color and blue label. The RF output cables are connected to the output ports. The Data Plus amplifiers have very flexible remote powering options and can be powered through the VOIP modem port or through the RF port number one. Prior to installing, determine which option will meet your specific needs. Let's look at the power pack and power inserter. The power pack converts AC to 15 volts DC, which is needed to power the Data Plus amplifier. On the power pack, there's a mounting hole at the top, which is used to secure the power pack to the AC outlet with a screw. This will prevent anyone from accidentally unplugging the power pack, which will result in the loss of power to the amplifier. The power pack comes with a loss of service tag installed. This is a warning that if the unit is unplugged, the cable service will be lost. There's a green LED which is a visual indicator that the power pack is working and has 15 volts DC. The power insert combines the DC from the power pack with the RF on the drop, which enables the DC to flow to the amplifier. The AC-DC power pack and the power inserter are a team and work together. The power inserter has three ports. One port is labeled two power supply. This port is connected to the power pack and only passes DC. The port labeled 2 amplifier DC slash RF is connected to the cable going to the amplifier and passes both DC and RF. The port labeled 2 TV slash modem RF output is connected to the end consumer device such as a set top box and modem and only passes RF. The path between the 2 power supply port and the two amplifier DC slash RF port only passes DC. This path has high isolation and will block all other frequencies. The path between the two amplifier DC slash RF port and the two TV modem RF output port will only pass RF and will not allow DC to pass through. This port has very low insertion loss to RF and loses less than 1 dB. Let's take a look at the flexible remote powering options. Option 1 is powering through the passive port. 
In this example, we're showing a bedroom outlet with a TV and a set-top, and an office with a VOIP modem service. Let's look at the powering on the office outlet where the modem is located. The input signal travels the input port of the Dataflux amplifier. From the passive port, the cables run to the office location where it's connected to the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC slash RF port. A cable is then connected to the 2TV modem RF output port and connected to the modem. The 2 power supply port is connected to the power pack and is plugged to the AC outlet. The DC flows from the power pack through the power inserter through the cable back to the passive port of the amplifier. The amplifier is now powered and the RF output ports are activated. The signal now flows from the amplifier through the cable to the bedroom outlets. It's important to make sure that the service loss tags are installed on the ends of the cables by the powered passive port and at the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC slash RF port. In this example, we power the amplifier from an AC outlet in the office. If the amplifier is installed close to an AC outlet, we could move the power pack and inserter to that location as well. Let's take a look at that option. The input signal travels to the input port. From the passive port, the cables run to the AC outlet where it's connected to the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC RF port. The cable is then connected to the 2TV modem RF output port to the cable running to the office where the modem is located. The 2 power supply port is connected to the power pack and is plugged into the AC outlet. The DC flows from the power pack through the power inserter through the cable back to the passive port of the amplifier. The amplifier is now powered and the RF output ports are activated. The signal now flows from the amplifier through the cable to the bedroom outlets. Let's look at option two, powering through the active RF port number one. We're still showing a bedroom outlet with a TV and a set-top and an office with a VOIP modem service. In this example, we'll be powering from the bedroom outlet where the TV set is located. The input signal travels the input port of the Dataplus amplifier. From the active port number one, the cables run to the bedroom location where it's connected to the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC slash RF port. The cable is then connected to the 2TV slash modem RF output port of the inserter and run to the TV set. The 2 power supply port is connected to the power pack and is plugged into the AC outlet. DC flows from the power pack through the power inserter through the cable back to the active port number 1 of the amplifier. The amplifier is now powered and the RF output ports are activated. The signal now flows from the amplifier through the cable to the other outlets. Make sure that the service loss tags are installed on the end of the cables by the powered active output port number one and at the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC slash RF port. In this example, we power the amplifier from an AC outlet in the bedroom. If the amplifier is installed close to an AC outlet, we could move the power pack and inserter to that location as well. Let's look at that option. The input signal travels the input port of the Data Plus amplifier. From the active port 1, the cables run to the AC outlet location where it's connected to the power inserter's 2 amplifier DC slash RF port. A cable is then connected to the 2 TV slash modem RF output port to the cable running to the bedroom where the TV set is located. The 2 power supply port is connected to the power pack and is plugged into the AC outlet. The DC flows from the power pack through the power inserter through the cable back to the powered active port number 1 of the amplifier. The amplifier is now powered and the RF output ports are activated. The signal now flows from the amplifier through the cable to the other outlets. There may be situations where you'd power the amplifier directly from one of the powering ports and not need RF out of that port to feed an outlet. In this case, you will still need to use a power inserter and you would install a terminator on the power inserter's 2 TV slash modem port. Let's look at why a power inserter is always needed when powering the data plus amplifiers. Electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference might penetrate the AC-DC power pack. The interference can pass through the F port and cause interference with the other ports of the amplifier or out to the system. The power inserter is designed to block this interference and only passes the DC through. So always use a power inserter with every amplifier. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the passive powering port. 
The interference that can penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the passive port. The interference will pass through the passive port to the input port, or it can travel up the drop to the system. With the power inserter installed, it will block any interference coming from the power pack. Always use a power inserter with every amplifier. And make sure you terminate any unused ports. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the active one powering port. The interference that can penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the active port. The interference will pass through the active port to the other RF ports, where it can interfere with services on the other outlets in the home. With the power inserter installed, it will block any interference coming from the power pack. Always use the power inserter with every amplifier. And make sure to terminate the unused port in the power inserter. Ensure the service loss tag is installed on the correct port. This will help ensure that the cable that is carrying the power is not accidentally disconnected. This will also help when servicing the amplifier in the future. Once all cables are installed, use a torque wrench to tighten all connections. If bonding is required at the amplifier, follow your local bonding procedures and connect to the bonding block connection of the amplifier. Once all connections are made on the Data Plus amplifier, mounting is easy with the Quick Mount system. Using the Quick Mount tabs, snap the device into the Quick Mount rails and it's securely mounted. This will also make servicing the amplifier in the future easier. If not using the Quick Mount system, use the supplied screws in the holes of the TrueFlex tabs and secure the device. Let's review what we've learned in this training on the Data Plus amplifier installation. We identify what parts are included in the Data Plus amplifier package. We showed how to configure the RF connections. Showed how to configure DC power options. And explained the importance of using the power inserter. Thank you for viewing this product installation training on the Data Plus amplifiers. For additional training topics, see our website at www.extreme-broadband.com.